Right, now it's all about outstanding brunches. I love brunch. It's a great way of relaxing with friends and family, not taking yourself or anything else too seriously. And brunch dishes should reflect that. Spicy, sweet or savoury, anything goes. And one of my all-time favourites, a dish that always creates a stir, is the daddy of all brunches, steak sandwiches. For me, the secret of a great brunch is fun and casual. Fuss-free cooking and everyone helping themselves. This is the ultimate steak sandwich. You want the Rolls-Royce of beef. It has to be fillet. Now, season it beautifully. I like to open up the top of the pepper mill to increase the size of the pepper in the steak so it gives that bit of heat. Nice little chunks. You just roll now nicely all the way around. Now, slice the garlic in half. Pan nice and hot. Olive oil in. Hold the steak and just place it into the pan. Don't drop it. At the front of the pan, we're going to tilt the pan forward to cook the back of the steak, dual purpose. Now, roll it back and sear it underneath. Next, my garlic. And roast that garlic. Time. Fry that time. I want to hear it. We're not looking for a lot of colour because you're going to dry out the fillet. So, just one end. Turn it back down and sear the other end in. Lift up your thyme. Place it on top of the garlic. There. Lift up your fillet and sit that on top of your garlic. Butter in. Take a spoon, tilt the pan gently, lift up and baste. I've got that scented garlic thyme flavour. The steak's going to cook evenly because it's sat on a little, a little bed in the oven for eight to ten minutes. Pan on. For the relish, you think of a steak sandwich, you think of a sort of nice, heated tomato relish. To make the relish, finely dice a red onion. Three-finger rule. One in front, two behind. Through and chop. Wow. Next, roughly chop a chilli, keeping the seeds in for extra heat. Start off with the olive oil into a pan. Onions, chilli. Generous with the olive oil. I want a nice sort of rich, silky relish. From there, take your tomatoes. You can just use red tomatoes, but these yellow and red make the perfect combination. Now, put your salt in. Pepper. And then roast those tomatoes off. Take a wooden spoon and just sort of break them up. Once the skin's blister, the whole tomato just starts to release all that really nice, sweet texture. A little teaspoon of sherry vinegar. Gives that nice, acidic balance to the sweetness of the tomatoes. Turn down the gas and just let them sort of stew perfectly. Now, a steak sandwich would not be complete unless it had the most amazing mustard mayonnaise. Simply add three tablespoons of mayonnaise to three teaspoons of whole grain mustard. Now I've got the relish almost down to like a really nice jam. Now, I want to make that relish a little bit more fragrant. Some basil. Slice it through and sprinkle that basil in there. Mmm. Beautiful. Look at this. There she is. My crown jewels. Time to take it out. The smell is incredible. I'm just baste one more time. And fill it. Touch is quite soft in the centre, so it's just coming up to mid rare. Let it rest at the same time you cooked it. It will be nice and pink, evenly. 
throughout the steak. To make my sandwich, I'm going to char grill some sliced gipatta bread. Season it nicely. Just a little drizzle of olive oil. I want to get that bread nice and crispy. Pan, nice and hot. Bread in. Push it down. Smell is amazing, that char, sort of charcoal flavour. Once you've got those marks on the bread, it just stops the bread from becoming soggy. And look at this here. It is stunning. On. Slice it gently. One beautiful slice. Wow. It's nice and pink all the way through. And the beef is so soft. It's almost like slicing through butter. Let the knife do the work. Take a little bit of mayonnaise, spread that with the back of the spoon on both sides. Next, lettuce. Take that beautiful slice of beef. Oh, and then relish on top of that beef and just slice the sandwich in half. Mmm. Beautiful. Now that's what I call a steak sandwich. Trust me, serve this sublime sandwich for brunch and you'll put a smile on everyone's face. Next up, my guide to buying the best beef and steaks. If you want the ultimate brunch, you can't do any better than start with a perfect steak. And one man who really knows his steak is master butcher Danny Lidgate. Steak is my favourite type of meat, and I think it's really good to enjoy different varieties of steak. When choosing a steak that you want, you need to look at exactly what you want out of it. For my ultimate steak sandwich, I use the fillet because it's the most tender. The fillet does the least amount of work than all the other muscles. It's tucked away in the rib cage. This means that when you find a fillet, it's incredibly soft, like butter. It's the most expensive, but you get what you pay for. There's a wide array of cuts to choose from, all different in taste and texture. If in doubt, ask your butcher. This would be the rump section, where the rump comes from, which is basically the back side. Take the bone out, and what you're left with is a wonderful steak. Rump steak, characteristically, a little bit tougher than the sirloin, or a little bit chewier than the ribeye, but a really strong flavour for the steak. Again, when buying rump, look for the marbling, try and get some fat covering on the steak. You can always cut it off after it's cooked. Rump's one of the best value steaks. I love it thinly cut and flash fried, in stir fries, or simply marinated and whacked on the barbecue. Another great value but delicious cut is the hanger steak, known as the butcher's cut because they often keep it for themselves. It's great marinated and cooked quickly. With the sirloin, which is basically the back of the animal, a nice sirloin like this, really well marbled, don't buy too lean. So once the sirloin's trimmed up, it looks something like this. Not too much fat, but you need a little bit to cooking it. Next to the sirloin is the rib. Really popping in our rib eyes. Small, nice, really tender, juicy steaks. It's really, especially good for barbecuing or grilling, fantastic. Probably my favourite steak would be a ribeye. Ribeye is especially delicious because of the marbling in the meat loads it with flavour. For a full-on steak experience, try the T-bone steak. With a small tender fillet steak on one side of the bone and a larger flavoursome sirloin on the other. Take your butcher's advice and you won't go wrong. The final word has to go to Danny. When buying meat, knowledge really is power, so it's important to ask as many questions about the meat you're buying. Find out the breed, how it's aged, and decide exactly what you want to do each particular job. That should then give you a really amazing end product. Coming up on my ultimate guide to brunch, tips on making the most out of fruit, and an incredible homemade crumpet. Something delicious and something you're dying to tuck into.